And finally, count four charges, conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. That's a felony under Idaho Code 1820.603 and 1817.01. And it also carries a punishment of up to five years in prison and a fine of up to $10,000. Do you understand that charge and those possible penalties? Yes. At this time, uh, Mr. Pryor, is Mr. Dave ready to enter his plea? Um, or do you need any additional time to discuss this with Mr. Dave Judge, at this time, we are prepared to go forward for the entry of a plea. Uh, Mr. Daybell, on behalf of Mr. Daybell, we will enter a plea of not guilty to all of the charges and obviously request a pretrial and a jury trial, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, so there you have it. Pleading not guilty. They always do, don't they? I mean, it is rare that someone pleads guilty after arraignment. It just doesn't happen. Uh, let's bring in the best team of legal journalists in the business. Joining me tonight, Chanley Painter, Court TV legal correspondent, Ted Rollins, Court TV anchor, and Julie Grant, Court TV anchor. Uh, Chanley, start with you. Uh, give us some more of the details of, of what we uh, saw today out there in Idaho. Well, it only took less than 10 minutes for Chad Daybell through his attorney, John Pryor, to enter not guilty pleas to all four felony counts he faces there in Fremont County, Idaho. We see him there dressed in white shirt, red tie, sitting next to his attorney. We've seen him wear that before in previous hearings via Zoom. Of course, we had the special prosecutor, Rob Wood, all along with the new judge in this case, District Court Judge Stephen Boyce, read Chad Daybill his rights. He summarized those charges again that's the charge of destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, and two counts of that, two counts of conspiracy to commit destruction, concealment, or alteration of evidence. And of course, Chad Dable entered the pleas. After that, the judge set some key dates that we want to mark our calendars for, including a jury trial date. The prosecutor asking for three weeks, and the judge set that for January of 2021, January 11th through 29th. There will be a jury trial for Chad Dable on all four of these counts. And, of course, a pre-trial conference for all those last-minute motions between attorneys and judge. That will be December the 10th. Now, in the meantime, Chad Dable will remain in Fremont county jail on one million dollar bail for those charges and if convicted on all four felony counts but he could face a maximum of 20 years in prison and up to forty thousand dollars in fines all right now i'm not that familiar with idaho if that's a realistic date but i mean they're moving along there my guess is it, it could very well be a realistic date but a, a three-week trial uh julie grant uh your reaction to that that to me that was one of the big takeaways that they're going to need three weeks at least, and the defense said, at least three weeks to try this case. Sure, and I think that sounds about right, Vinny, especially after that prelim. I mean, we saw two days for the preliminary hearing. We saw a lot of evidence presented at that juncture. So you can imagine when these prosecutors have the much higher burden of beyond a reasonable doubt that they're going to take their time and enter lots of evidence. And the thing I really keep scratching my head about is that I really thought that we would have more charges added to this complaint at this juncture. And we haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen any homicide charges yet. And and there's they seem to be going full steam ahead with these other felony counts that he was arraigned on today. So uh, Chad Dabo is going to get started preparing that defense with his attorney. And um, as, as we heard uh, he, from the judge, he's cloaked in the presumption of innocence until then. Yeah, and Ted, still up to this point, uh, no motion for joinder to bring these cases together. It's Lori Vallow's got her own uh, track. Uh, Chad Daybell's got his track. Uh, but did anything jump out at you today from uh, today's quick arraignment? Uh, I, I, I just think it, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think we'll get to January, and this is what Chad Daybell is going to be facing. I do think that by then you're going to have some murder charges on the table. So I, I just was thinking the whole time, oh, this is a waste of time. I just can't believe that there are two dead kids in his backyard, and this is all he's facing. Um, I hope not. I hope not. And I, I just think that by January, they're going to be onto something else, much more serious. All right. Now, Chanley, in her reporting tonight, Chanley, you were mentioning uh, what he wore to court today, which was similar to what he wore last time. Uh, I believe he matched his attorney last time, but his attorney had a different tie this time. But there is something that I've noticed about Chad Daybell, because now that we've been reporting on this for uh, close to seven months now and covering this case and digging up 
some photos and stuff. What I've noticed is a real transformation in the look of Chad Dable. I want to put that up on the screen because the way I would describe it is, um, you know, early Chad on the on the left side of your screen, I call that geek. And then on the right side, that is chic, right? You got the short sleeve button down on the left. You got the, the, the very, you know, you know, I wouldn't say unattractive, just a very plain haircut. Then on the right-hand side, he's got the pullover shirt, got a little arm candy with him, right? Uh, but also, you notice his haircut there, Ted? Short on his side, a little extra in the front. It's kind of zipped up a little bit there. Wait, it almost looks like Ted Roland's haircut. Uh, wow, well, it's not as nice as my hair. hair. Nobody yes. has Ted Roland's hair. Not there. quite as good as Ted's. But I think it was trying. It takes a lot. But here's my right. question. I mean... Should we read anything into that? Do, 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 and I'll start with you, Chanley. Do you think that was the influence of Lori that kind of got him to, you know, kind of revitalize his look? Or do you think uh, it was like a middle-aged crazy thing? Or, or what do you think was going on there? Or was it the well, insurance money? Now he's going to a, a hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know there were a lot of changes in the lives of Lori and Chad when they met that fateful day in the fall of 2018, and that seemed to be one of them. When we look at photos from when he was with married, still married to Tammy over the years to when he got with Lori Vallow, you see a revelation. There's maybe some uh, new hairdo, lost some weight, uh, new styling. Maybe that's something that Lori Vallow was into. She wanted him to dress a certain way. But this is a case where we may see both of them consolidate or we may see both of them pointing the fingers at each other and maybe that's going to be maybe a defense strategy to say hey look at this transformation in his image and in his look and it wasn't until he met her and this is all her fault so definitely a possibility um julie grant what would you advise to him uh <laughs> at trial should he go back to the short sleeve dress shirt uh in idaho I or should he <laughs> stay with the more contemporary look? And, and, and this is actually a serious question on how he wants to present yeah. himself. Let's say this case is in East Idaho. Does he want to go back to maybe uh, church Chad, you know, the way he used to look, as opposed to, you know, Hawaiian cool guy Chad? Right. No, I, I get what you're saying. Absolutely. And jury consultants will definitely tell you, you need to know your audience. You need to know who's going to be in that pool of jurors. So the answer would be, it all depends. It all depends where this case is ultimately tried. We know, we learned today that Chad Daybell's attorney has 60 days from today to file a motion for a change of venue if he wants to try to get this case out of Fremont County. So depending on who the jury is, is probably going to dictate the image that he has going to court ever so slightly. And um, so, so yes, that is the serious answer. Um, and and I, I love that you pointed out that transformation, Vinny, because you're exactly right. You nailed it. Um, from geek to chic, that is exactly what we've seen with Chad Daybell. And certainly prosecutors, uh, hopefully they will pick up on that and um, perhaps use that when they go to try to construct a motive here. And, you know, if they have this doomsday motive going on, then maybe they will... Um, you know, sort of point to his image as well and how he looked and how he changed. And uh, who knows, maybe his attorney may even try to use that to his advantage in terms of a defense. Um, but uh, yeah, you're exactly right, Vinny. Uh, you're, you're one of the smartest people I know and also one of the funniest <laughs> from geek to chic. I love it. Uh, Ted, you know, when I look at this, um, when he was with Tammy, completely different guy than when he's with Lori. And, and it's evident just from the, from the photos. And I don't know if it's if it's him doing like here. He looks like a, a normal guy. Look at this. You know, happily he look, married. Yeah, he, hey, put my arm around her. Look at that. He looks innocent. Yeah, he looks he looks innocent. He looks like Chad, the guy who's uh, oh yeah, he writes books and thinks the world's coming to an end, kind of. But he looks like a guy that's not going to hurt anybody with his short sleeve shirts uh, and his arm around Tammy. When he's got his arm around Lori, um, now he's starting to look a little guilty to me and so i think there's absolutely uh, it's a no-brainer i dress him back up as geek chad and uh put him in front of the jury like that especially if it's in eastern idaho yeah i i would probably put the short sleeve dress shirt on him chanley and maybe tie the tie just a little too short <laughs> maybe some glasses you know, not have it come all the way down it's, it's it's a little short and yeah you know glasses you got to be careful because sometimes glasses make you look um, 
on certain men, sometimes they put the glass, you put the wrong glasses on, all of a sudden you're looking maybe like a child molester. You know, if you pick the wrong kind, you got to pick the right kind. But it can make him look softer also. But I think, you know, when he's with Tammy, I think Ted hit the nail on the head. I mean, he looks like a normal, the guy next door, good buddy. Hey, you know, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Right? Yeah, then it's really kind of eerie if you think about it because, you know, we've talked to family and friends in Idaho all over that knew Chad Daybell that were one of, even his followers. And they talk about this transformation, just, you know, he meets Lori, and he's promoting, you know, traditional LDS doctrines. He writes about them in his books, and then all of a sudden, there's a turn. They become darker, almost dangerous even to a lot of people that we've talked to, these views. And really, you see that also reflected in his image. It really goes right along with the story and the narrative that we've been hearing all along. All right, Chanley, how about Lori Vallow? Let's uh, get everyone up to speed on what's going on with her right now. Well, she has her formal formal arraignment in just a couple of weeks, September the 10th. It's going to be at noon Eastern, and she also will have a new judge, District Judge Dane Watkins Jr., and we'll pretty much see the same thing that we witnessed today for Chad Daybell. She only faces two counts, two felony counts in Fremont County, where, where he is. Those are the conspiracy to commit alteration, destruction, concealment of evidence for her case. She will also receive a trial date, a pre-trial conference date. And, of course, she has a trial already in Madison County for those three misdemeanors there. That's also in January, January 25th. 